How much better can Ho Shoryu get? Much of the next sumo decade could well be shaped with the answer to that question. Until now, despite a huge range of skills, he's always had trouble compensating for his lack of bulk. But the incredible winning score he put together in September shows how much he's learning, and bought him priceless extra time to adjust to the demands of Division 1. As any elite level debutant will tell you, a good start is vital. And that Horshoryu got in superb morale boosting fashion by beating hugely more experienced compatriot Ichinojo. How tactically astute, holding up Ichinojo's bid for the treasured outside left, turning it into an inside right of his own. Tipping the giant to keep the right far away from his belt, and driving forward once balance has been upset. But it's a tough ask for a new top division body to maintain this, as days 2 and 3 proved. The first of those saw Shimano Umi well prepared for any inside right attempt, and keen to impose his signature left press thereafter. Hoshoryu used sparkling footwork to try and get an angle on him, but Shimano Umi's left held firm, and although you can't see it from my shot, just did enough to secure the win in the eyes of the judges. Day 3 saw Kyoku Taisei equally equipped to thwart an inside right with a deft leftward shuffle of the hips. Once the left outside grip was reinforced with a trademark right frontal, multiple attacks ensued. A throw, a leg trip, and finally a forward drive. Hoshoryu bounced back on days 4 and 5 though, with victories over winless Shohozan and 2nd Division promotion seeker Nishikigi. Again, the inside right attempt is well blocked, but Nishikigi's famously wide open armpits lead to his downfall as Horshoryu's insane directional switches ensure the armlock throw just doesn't work. Day 6 threw up a match with Tobizaru, a fellow top division debutant who he was expected to outperform. But while Horshoryu remains light, Tobizaru has bulked up immensely in the past two years, and knocked him about like a tennis ball. That was scarce the ideal lead-in to a match against sworn rival Koto Shoho on day 7. Hoshoryu remains unable to beat his fellow Kashiwa man as a professional. Then, after bettering injured veteran Koto Shogiku on day 8, he lost to the giant pairing of Kaisei and Tokushoryu, either side of a cheeky sidestep and push-out of Chiyo Taidyu. That led up to the eagerly awaited lightweight showdown on day 12 against Enho. Hoshoryu is clearly unused to facing footwork fancier than his own, and he'll need to strategize appropriately next time. That seventh defeat left him on the demotion precipice, needing to win all three remaining bouts to survive. But since traumatically losing an effective playoff for second division status last year, he's been unafraid to take big risks in the closing matches.
An outside right is not his specialty, but in this situation, any grip producing any throw will do. Day 14, as you likely remember, was his September highlight. His acrobatic trip throw of Kagayaki, arguably the winning move of the entire tournament. For such pain did he gain the following favorable final day terms. Beat Sadano Umi to stay up. The one-sided match reflected the fact that although Sadano Umi was also on 7-7, seven and seven, he had no danger of going down. Hoshoryu, at his most aggressive, never took a single step back. This is where the young starlet will be working with Meisei to pile on the extra muscle, at the bespoke gym facilities of Tatsunami Stable. He's one centimeter taller than his uncle. If he matches his uncle's weight, too, we could have a Yokozuna on our hands.